there. It's Gary Parrish. Welcome back to the CBS Sports Ion College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting, dodo birds, and leaky black. Matt Norlander, he's here with me. If you're watching on YouTube, smash the like button like you're Brandon Davies. You have consent. If you haven't yet subscribed to the CBS Sports College Basketball YouTube channel, also do that while you're here. Let's get into it. Today, we are continuing our summer shoot around series that we're doing over a seven week span. We've already published episodes on. Arizona, Arkansas, Baylor, Connecticut, Creighton, Duke, Florida Atlantic, and Gonzaga. We're working in alphabetical order, and so we're turning our attention now to Kansas. The Jayhawks were 28-8 and overall last season, went 13-5 and in the Big 12, won the league regular season title by a game over Texas, then lost to Texas in the title game of the Big 12 tournament. Got a one seed in the NCAA tournament, beat Howard in the round of 64, but then lost 72-71 to Arkansas, in the round of 32, while Hall of Fame coach Bill Self was sidelined with a heart condition. The top two scorers from that team, gone. Jalen Wilson, Grady Dick, both out the door. But Kevin McCullough, K.J. Adams, Dewan Harris, all back. Hunter Dickinson and Nick Timberlake have transferred into the Jayhawks program. It's why Kansas, I got them ranked number one in the preseason top 25 and one. We'll see what Norlander thinks about that next. But first, a word from our partners. In case you're new here, we're here to. In case you're new here, we're here to make history. We are more than the names on our back. We're the team on the front, the country on our shoulders, the city behind us, and the fire inside us. The best in the world. We got us. We don't just play the world's game. We run it. All right, Deadleg, Kansas, preseason number one. Do you appreciate it or are you appalled by it? Oh, man, the alliteration. Uh, no way do I could I be appalled by it. I appreciate it. Do I agree with it? Is it is it uh, apropos? Maybe we'll see. I haven't yet decided on on what team I will slot number one because that's that's true preseason action. But Kansas is understandably in not just in the conversation, but seems to be tracking to be the preseason number one team in the AP top 25 trivia time. Come on. How many times has Four. Kansas been the preseason number one team in the AP top 25? Okay. I'm going to take that answer back. It's nine. You're going with nine? Nine's my answer. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. It was three. Your first cl- guess was much closer. Three times. Story of my life. Those years, 2018, 2009, and 2004. So those are the 18, 19, 09, 10, 04, 05 seasons. In 2019, after being picked number one in the preseason, KU actually had a, a, a considerable down year for itself. Went 26 and 10. Finished third in the Big 12, was a four seed, lost in the second round of the tournament to Auburn. In 2009, after being picked first in the preseason, coming off of, of course, uh, the NCAA championship in 2008, and then for the 08-09 season, was preseason number one. KU finished, uh, finished 27 and 8, was a three seed, did win the Big 12, lost in the Sweet 16, and then in 2005, Kansas won the Big 12, was again a three seed, finished 23 and seven after losing the first round to Buck Nell. So Ray Buck Nell, Ray Buck Nell. I mm-hmm. think that's what they do. Yes, um, something like that. So the three other times that this is, and we'll see if Kansas is actually the preseason number one team. I'm guessing it will be, but there's no guarantee. We'll see. Um, there is it, a guarantee. I guarantee it. All right, you guarantee it. There we go. Uh, it has underperformed those projections now to actually like meet the expectation you got to win the national championship i'm not saying kansas needs to do that but if you're preseason number one i think to match that hype you you need to be a one seed and win three tournament games i think that kind of validates it kansas has not done that the three previous times that has happened um and as has been, been discussed on this podcast previously there have been preseason number one teams that have won the national championship it doesn't happen that often but trivia time 
Last team to do it. Four. Last team to be preseason number Four. one in the country and go on to win the national championship. Last time that happened was when and who? 2009 North Carolina. That is bingo, bango. Yes. You know why I know that? Here's how I know that. Because after they won the championship, Tyler Hansborough literally said into a microphone, nobody believed, nobody thought we could do this. <laughs> Did that actually happen? Yes. It's the funniest thing ever. It's the, it's the greatest chip on the shoulder moment ever. He said, nobody believed in us. I'm like, dude, everybody believed in you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? We all That's believed incredible. in you. We all not only did we think you could do it, we actually believed that's that's that some did. that's some Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey level, you know, ish, if you will, because that is just outrageous. Is that even like we were like, yeah, I think North Carolina could maybe do it. We were like, yeah, North Carolina will probably do it. That's the team to do it. If anybody he can won do it, it'll be the player of the year and returned as a senior. And this, broke it. this is for all the haters who didn't believe in us. <laughs> and Gosh. I'm paraphrasing here. It wasn't exactly yeah. that, but it was something along the lines of nobody thought we could do this, you know, but we never lost faith. <laughs> Everybody thought you could do this. Unbelievable. You have, you have 7,000 NBA players and a Hall of Fame coach. We all thought you could do this. Incredible. Um, well, we'll see if Kansas can be the first team in 14 years to do so. Why do you have the Jayhawks above all others in your offseason top 25 to one? When the best coach in the country has the best roster in the country, it's pretty easy for me. And that's what I think Bill Self has. Maybe not the most talented roster in the country, but I think if you told me I could have any basketball, college basketball roster in the country, I would want Kansas's because they, they have high end talent. Um, they have experience. Um, they've got shooting, they've got proven commodities, they've got depth, and they've got the guy who is widely regarded to be the best coach in college basketball. You know, it's not just that they're number one in the top 25 and one, they're uh, number one in the betting markets. You know, they're the favorite to win the national championship at, at plus 1,000. Duke is second at plus 1,200. So you've got, you know, a rock solid lead guard, an all American level five. You've got shooting, um, you know, on the wing in Nick Timberlake. This is a guy who, you know, has shot above 40% from three in each of the past two seasons. Yes, it was at Towson, but um, yeah, he's a 6'4 shooter. I think that's going to translate. And um, it, it, it's it, like, I, I, how about this? Mm -hmm. I had Kansas number one before Kevin McCullough announced that he's coming back to school. So they were number one in my mind and then added a double-digit great defensive player, double-digit score, great defensive player from last season's team. And then just last week, they had uh, Johnny Furphy, a 6'7 wing from Australia. Can you say that name one more time? Is it Johnny Furphy? Yeah. Love yeah. it. Okay. Can you do it in an Australian accent? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, mate. I can't do that, mate. Hey. Mike. I don't know how to do that, mate. Johnny Furphy. Yeah, Johnny. Uh, Johnny Furphy. Furphy from the wing. Okay. Uh, listen, I don't know anything about Johnny Furphy other than what I read immediately after Kansas announced that they had signed Johnny Furphy. But I did see Eric Bossy, our friend and colleague Eric Bossy, say that. What did Bossy say on Furphy? He said if you put him in the class of 2023, he'd be a top 100 player, maybe even a top 50. So it's just like they just – they were number one in the country, Kansas, before McCullough and Furphy – they just added piece rotation pieces to increase, uh, you know, they're the gap between what I consider number one and number two. Bolster to bolster. They bolstered their roster. They bol they they were number one, and then they bolstered their roster. They didn't have to bolster the roster to be number one. They were already number one, and then they bolstered. First they bolstered here, then they bolstered there, and now they're, in my opinion, clear cut number one team in the country. Clear cut. Clear cut. Um, you will definitely have some agreement with that with some of uh, our media colleagues as we drift closer to October when the preseason top 25 and all the other big preseason polls come out. GP's had that rolling, obviously, since the day after the national championship game. I think Dewan Harris can be top three point guard in the country next season, which is why I will strongly consider Kansas putting them number one whenever I do my top 101 teams. Um, he, he is a pass first traditional point guard. He is not a combo guard. Uh, yes, he can score if need be. He averaged nine a game last season, but he looks to distribute. He thrives at, at that role. 
and will continue to do so this season. And he's a wonderful two-way player. If anything, I know Kansas fans aren't going to undervalue him. I still think he might be a smidge undervalued and that, you know, perspective on him could change by the time we get to mid December there. Um, so his return, I think is no small thing. And then KJ Adams, who is extremely versatile and can play the three, four, he won't need to play the five here with Dickinson, but if for whatever reason, like self decides to get funky with it and rolls a, rolls a rotation out there or Dickinson is in foul trouble. If they need him to play small ball five, he can absolutely do so. I love KJ Adams and I expect him to have a wonderful upcoming season. McCuller coming back is, you know, yes, that's, that's gravy. Of course he has top five defender of the nation, uh, you know, a ceiling, that kind of potential there. And you will definitely have those three Dickinson all starting. I would suspect Timberlake will be the fifth starter, although Arterio Morris may also be in that conversation. Morris is a transfer from Texas who actually, you know, if you've listened to the podcast and you're familiar with the situation, he was, uh, he, he came under fire, understandably so for, uh, some fairly serious, uh, allegations, uh, from a former girlfriend, those charges were eventually dropped. He transferred out of Texas. Here he is at Kansas, and he is expected to be someone that will play more of a prominent role with Kansas than he did with Texas there. Uh, beyond that, I don't think the losses of Jalen Wilson and Grady Dick, and they're reflected in your ranking, GP. Like This just speaks to being a blue blood. Like You lose... A lottery pick and then a number, another NBA pick and a guy who was one of the five best players in the country last season, like Dick was a lottery pick and Jalen Wilson was an All-American. And <laughs> wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Like, we're right back where we want to be. Like, we are a Final Four national championship contender. And despite losing, you know, nearly 35 points a game in production and everything that Wilson and Grady Dick brought to the offensive end of the floor, Kansas just seems to be... Uh, set up to do to do well. I love El Marco Jackson, the incoming freshman. We'll see how much run he gets. I saw him play last summer. He was on the Under Armour circuit, and I think he has tremendous potential as a two or three year college player. Like the kind of guy who I don't know if he'll need three years in college, but if he stays three years in college, I think he will be an All American preseason candidate going into his junior year. I think he can grow into be that good. He's going to join Jamari McDowell, who is a four star prospect for Kansas, and we'll see how much burn he gets. I have mentioned on this podcast earlier this offseason about Dickinson's. Uh, ceiling and how this is going to go. Um, I, I do think that he will be very good. I'm not, I'm not convinced he will definitely be Kansas's best player. And if he's not, maybe that's a good thing for Kansas. Now he, he may, maybe he, maybe he steps in GP and is an 18 and 12 guy and really enters into that top three, top four player in the country. I also think that's possible, but I didn't, I don't automatically assume that's going to be the case, particularly when you've got a double digit score in McCuller. Dewan Harris might might jump up to be a guy who can average go from, you know, nine a game to 10 or 11. KJ Adams spoke on him already. And they've got, uh, you know, Timberlake, who you know dropped more than 17 a game at Towson. So uh, there's a, an embarrassment of riches from a roster standpoint. I do agree with you on that. And I think that even if you want to zag a little bit, I, 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 I wouldn't say you shouldn't do that with Kansas, but as we scan the landscape here from a roster standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, you can't really objectively make a case to put KU outside of the top four heading into the season. Like they are a one seed candidate and deservedly so there. And uh, I'm excited to see what they can do as we record this. And we pre-record these, of course, they are on a foreign tour and, uh, and early indications are, are quite optimistic with what this roster has. I will bet you a Guster sticker that Hunter Dickinson is Kansas's best player. Okay, sure. I can get that Guster sticker to you. How are we defining best player? Like at the end of the year, we just agree he's the best player. Yeah. Okay. I mean, how is he not going to be the best player? Uh, he he gets hurt and someone else becomes the best player. Well, uh, yeah, if he dies, if Hunter Dickinson dies, he will not be Kansas's best player. I agree. <laughs> but I mean, this guy's. Gonna... Just, I think it's more likely than not. I just don't think it's it's a one hundred percent automatic lock. That's all. He's been a. And I'm not arguing here. I'm just laying it out for the listeners. He's been an All-American level guy three straight years and 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 was actually a second team All-American 
in his freshman season. Yes. So has there has there is it fair to say there has been some regression, or is that is that not fair to say? Hmm. I I do not think Hunter Dickinson is a worse player in 2023 than he was in 2021. But um, it, but but this is true. His most decorated season in terms of honors was his freshman year, not his sophomore year, not his junior year. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know that that means much other than, you know, in his junior year, he played on an NIT team, right? NIT players don't typically get first team All American honors, second team All American honors. They get off the radar a little bit. I, yeah. I think he's going to be fabulous. I, I don't know if he'll be the best big in the country, but I, I, I would bet right now, as long as he stays healthy, he will be either a first team, second team, or third team All American as KU's best player. You mentioned. You know how you know you you lose Jalen Wilson, who's a Big Twelve Player of the Year and first team All American, and you lose Grady Dick, who's a incredible shooter and uh, you know, wingless size, who was a lottery pick, and yet here they are again, just uh, preseason number one. I guess that's just uh, that's being a blue blood. I, I get your point. I don't think that's being a blue blood. I think that's being Bill Self at Kansas. Um, like Indiana is Indiana still a blue blood? Mm-hmm. Let's 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 not drag IU fans into this, but I understand the point. No, no, I, 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 I'm not even good. trying to make a joke. I'm just saying they yeah. lose Trace Jackson Davis, first team All American. They're not even going to be preseason top twenty five. I don't yeah. think. Like, um, you yeah. know, it's not like Kentucky can just lose whatever anymore and be preseason number one. That doesn't happen. It's not true at North Carolina. It's kind of close to true at Duke. Like you look up every year and they just got one of the best rosters in the country. But I, I think this is not. Like, like the, that, that is something you can say at this point, at this, in this moment in college basketball, just you lose whatever, just assume they're going to be a preseason top five team. I think it's something you can say about Kansas. I think it's something you could probably say about Duke. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's any, something you can say about anybody else in the country. That's probably, that's probably the case there uh, for Kansas in particular to have loaded up the way that it did. Yeah, um, there's a lot to be excited about with this team. Can I run through this schedule? And, and some of it is, it's not just you have to reload every year. You know what mm-hmm. Bill is is able to do maybe, but it's the in-program development. Like, like who was K.J. Adams until they developed him into K.J. Adams? Oh, that's definitely part of it, yeah. There's, I mean, they, they, they turn- not the kind of program that is, now Grady Dick was an exception, but you all know this, GP. Like, they are not getting freshmen in, more often than not, I should say, and having those guys be option A or option B, the overwhelming, you know, best player on the team. Kansas is, has managed to get five star recruits, but also rely upon guys in their second, third, sometimes fourth year. Yeah, that that, that they turn, they take guy, they t- Kansas. I think more than any other program in the country can take a guy who's a role player as a freshman and he's a first team All American as a junior. They they develop. They don't they don't just enroll Brandon Miller. And boom, it's just like I mean they've done that, but that's not the typical Kansas. And that and and so that's why they don't have to quote reload every year. Like somebody within the program, it seems like every single year, peop, somebody steps up and is a dramatically different player than they were the year before or two years prior. Um, I, I remember the, in just on the conversation of reloading and all that. There was one year when I used to do that Politex column, and I this is the thing that made me stop writing it about the preseason AP poll. Cause you have no data. You're just sort of like, it's all projections on paper, or whatever. Um, you, when you write that column during the season, you're just finding nonsensical things. Like somebody just lost two games last week to unranked opponents. And you, in this, this voter moved them up from 14th to sixth. What are you doing? Um, like, that's easy. But there was a time where I would write that column in the preseason AP poll. I'd just say, ah, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in the AP poll. And there was one year where Kansas literally lost all five starters. Like the whole, all five starters were, they had, they had to replace five starters. And there was some AP voter who voted Kansas preseason number one. It seemed to make no sense. I even, if somebody can find it, called Bill Self or texted him or something. And 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 said, hey, I'm like writing this column about some guy who voted you guys number one, even though you lost all five starters. Like, what what, what do you think of that? And Bill was like, I think it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. We should not be number one, right? And so I wrote this whole column, and I'm just you know piling on this guy. And that guy, Seth Davis. <laughs> I don't know. I was. I don't remember who it was. I don't think it was Seth. But anyway, the whole column. It's even like the whole point was like even Bill Self thinks this guy's crazy. And you look at like 
eight weeks later, they're number one in the country. <laughs> of course, yeah. they're the best team in the country. And so it's it's a it's unique to Kansas and or Bill, uh, but that's the most rock solid program in the country. I, I, like, I somebody can bring up NCAA stuff and Adidas if they want to. I don't care. I'm just saying the most consistent big time winner in college basketball is 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 now the Kansas Jayhawks. They have gotten a, a number one seed in ten of the past sixteen NCAA tournaments. Think about that. In 10 of the past 16 NCAA tournaments, Kansas has received a number one seed, and it would be 11 in a 17-year span if not for the dumbest pandemic of our lifetime. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Ridiculous, as always. Let's get to this non-conference schedule and the the regular season schedule for our regular season win total segment. It's It's the part everyone loves. Here we go. NCCU, North Carolina Central, then Manhattan. Then they got Kentucky in the Champions Classic. Then... Kansas will go to Maui. They get Chaminade first. Yes, we'll write in a W there. Then they'll either play Marquette or UCLA. Hmm. And then the other side of the bracket, it'll be either Gonzaga, Purdue, Syracuse, or Tennessee. Uh, But two quality opponents there. And then Eastern Illinois at home. They'll play UConn at the Fog. Yes, reigning champs come in. Well, battle of two most recent national champs. Love that. They'll play Kansas City, formerly UMKC, the Ruse. Uh, The border war goes to Fog Allen this season kansas will host missouri couldn't love it more absolutely love to see that and was uh was uh refreshingly surprised when i was reminded that indeed was happening this season love to see that they're gonna play at indiana at indiana that's the one road game and non-con for ku they will host yale and then another great one that i love to see um on december 30th they're gonna play wichita state now they're gonna play it in kansas city but for a long long time Understandably so, Kansas would just straight up never remotely agree to play Wichita State. Now Wichita State has drifted back a little bit. It's not what it was four or six years ago. But nevertheless, you do get an interstate battle that will be going down in Kansas City, Missouri. That is the non-con. As for the regular season in the Big 12, here is what Kansas has in the new look Big 12. And again, when we're recording this, it could be an even newer look Big 12 eventually. Um They will have home and aways against Baylor, Houston, Kansas State. Two games apiece. Those are the big ones. Then they're also going to have two against Oklahoma and Self's alma mater, Oklahoma State. Only have to play at home against BYU, Cincinnati, TCU. And then in Texas's final year, Texas goes to the fog. Kansas does not have to go to Austin. Road only. Kansas at UCF in Big 12 play. That's that's. Just sketchy as hell, but whatever. That's going to happen. Iowa State on the road. Texas Tech on the road. West Virginia on the road. I have set the over-under at 25.5 regular season wins for the Kansas Jayhawks. Last season, when Kansas was a one seed, it won 25 games. I set it at 25.5. What's their record going to be before the Big 12 tournament? Uh, I feel like you got to shorten the wingspan there, and this is now a thing. Yeah, not good. Like I want to people... fly over it, but that non-league schedule is outrageous. Yeah. It's time for you to take the under. That non-league schedule is outrageous. Kentucky, Maui, reigning champs at home, Missouri coming into the building at Indiana against Wichita State and KC are the big ones in non-con, and then you've got the Big 12. Okay. This is tough. I'm going to go two non-league losses. I agree. Okay. And then I'm going to go four Big 12 losses. League champs, number one seed. 31 minus six is 25. I've got them at 25. I got to go under. You got to go under, under no with shame my in. preseason number one, but only because the non-league schedule is outrageous. I'm getting money up under you. I've been flying over, but now I'm getting money up under you. I got you beat. I'm going to go 26 and five. Oh, man. I got him 26 and five. I got KU at with two non-league losses. And then I'm just going to have, because of this big 12 schedule, I'll even since it's such a, since it's such a gaudy projection, I'll say only three losses. I'll say they lose. I'll say they get picked off at Baylor. They get picked off at Houston. 
And um, I don't think they lose any of their road onlys. Uh, and what the hell? Jerome Tang gets it done again. They get picked off at K-State. I don't think they get beat in their building in the league play, and I don't think they're losing at UCF, at Iowa State, at Texas Tech, at West Virginia. Iowa State's the one where I was like, mm, maybe. But yeah, 26-5. and five. Come at me! It's me and Bill Self hanging out at the Final Four right now. <laughs> You're nowhere to be seen. <laughs> me and uh, me and Dusty May and yeah. Dan Hurley will be at the table over on the other side yeah. of the room. We'll just exactly. wave at you guys every once in a while. I thought you, I thought you were going to match me. Because yeah, I was like, well, do I want to go like this is tough. I was like, if I go twenty four and a half, he's going over. If I go twenty five and a half, I'm gonna make him think about it. There it's we go. That, it's just that there's so many good teams in Maui that like you. That's a toss up situation. Like you could be the best team in the country and take a loss there. Yeah. And then, I mean, you said it's at Kentucky, right? That's Champions Classic. That's neutral. Oh, that's neutral. But like, just just so many other games against really talented teams. Yeah. Like you just you just lose one of those somewhere. Yeah. And so then I. I got 25 heading into the Big 12 tournament, and I, I that will be easily, against that schedule, that will be easily enough to give them. If they have 25 wins heading into the Big 12 tournament, they will be a number one seed in the NCAA They'll tournament. be projected to be a one seed for sure. 25, right. 25 wins in a, I'm just saying, like the Big 12 championship game run, they're going to be a one seed. Uh, even shy of that might get that done against that schedule. Right. Right. Shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, South Carolina. Shouts to Huck Larnell. Thank you guys once again for watching, listening to the Ion College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed, please go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Rate it, review it. There's more of us than there are of them. That needs to be reflected in the comments. So go knock that out. We'll talk to you again real soon. Till then, take care.